Listen, the same ass you kick today might be the same ass you kiss tomorrow. <laughs> Beer, ballparks, beaches for some of you guys, babes. <laughs> So therefore you can be alerted and emailed the next time we upload another video to help you create more money as an entrepreneur in the insurance industry, blah, 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 blah. How do I make that real simple? And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit the notification button so therefore you can be alerted for our next episode when we up. <clears throat> and if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit the no Make sure, if you're watching this. <laughs> What's cracking everybody? My name's Smart Guy, Matt Zapala, here with another, man. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the no f You're going to be a lot more happier than the result. What was, what's going on? Huh? What's going on? I'm just trying to... Oh. All right, it's summertime. You know it, baby. My favorite season. My favorite season for a lot of reasons. What does it mean for a lot of people? Baseball. You play ball like a girl. Barbecue. Beer. Beaches. That's summertime, baby. The best times in Chicago are the summertime. But how many competitors are out there? How many entrepreneurs out there that's looking for an edge watching this video right now? If that's you, I'm gonna share with you the three summertime distractions to avoid as an entrepreneur. My smart guy, Matt Zapali, here at the Field of Dreams, right here in Oak Brook Terrace Park District, in our backyard here in the Chicagoland area. You're watching another episode of Living Money Smart. If you haven't done so already, make sure you click like on Facebook. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit the notification button so therefore you can be alerted when we upload our next episode. Here we are, Living Money Smart, episode 41. Now, I'm gonna make a couple assumptions here. I'll make the assumption, number one, that you are just absolutely committed to understanding business and free enterprise and capitalism is the way for you to become financially independent. I'm also going to assume that you have a business model and a business that you're in right now that you're embracing, that you said, man, I, got, I can make some money at this thing, that you're willing to go all in. And number three, you're willing to take personal ownership of your business, of your finances, of your actions, of your results, and you're willing to do whatever it takes. My mentor, CEO, founder, PHB agency, and host and creator of Valuetainment tweeted this past week. He said, you know what? Wasted time is gonna show up. Wasted time will show up three, four, five years from now. Oftentimes people say, man, I wish I had enough money for a house. Man, I wish I had enough money for a new car. Man, I, should, I wish I had enough money to send my kids to this uh, summertime experience or this church group uh, outing, whatever the case may be. You cannot complain about the money that you don't have from the work you were unwilling to do and from the money that you didn't save. I got two words to remind you of when wasted time shows up. You know what they are? Here we go, two words, Facebook memories. Why? Because we can see what type of milestones you and I were dealing with a year ago, three years ago, five years ago. Listen, nine years ago, I made a decision that the Great Recession was not going to define me. I lost a lot of money, I sold my business, I went to a lot of other bad decisions in 2009 and I made a decision to double down and say, you know what? I'm gonna be much different. I'm gonna provide value to the world. And guess what? That unwasted time is showing up right now. So in the words of a famous poet of the 1990s, his name being Eminem, he said in one of his songs, If you had one shot, one opportunity, to seize everything you ever wanted, would you capture it? Just let it slip. So here we go. Three summertime distractions to consider to make sure that you get ahead as an entrepreneur. Tip number one, rethink summertime and the definition of summertime. Listen, man, oftentimes uh, people say, you know, man, you're an entrepreneur, you got things out going on, and you got so many great things happening for you. Listen, you see me now, but you didn't see me 10 years ago. You didn't see me 15 years ago. You didn't see me in 1999, 2000, coming out the Marine Corps with $20,000 of a salary and $15,000 of credit card debt. You didn't see me making a decision 
about rethinking what I did during off times, evenings, weekends, in this case, summertime. And I realized that the majority of my competitors, the majority of the people that I was competing against are companies or businesses or firms that I was out producing and outranking and wanted to out strategize, in this case, out work, they were taking off. They were going on vacations. They were spending the money. Let them do it. So listen, during this time of the year, if you avoid these summertime distractions of what typical traditional summertime activities are all about, you're gonna find yourself focused, you're gonna find yourself a little bit more disciplined than most other people, and they're gonna be a lot more happier with the results that you create during this time of the year than most other parts. Number two, in avoiding summertime distractions. I don't wanna to sound too cliche, but listen, set a goal. If you're gonna make the sacrifice of delaying gratification, you're gonna make the sacrifice of working while everybody's playing, set yourself a goal. What is your business gonna look like in the end of August? In a previous vlog, we talked about the three by three system of goal setting. We talked about three different types of goals. They had to be a selfish goal, an emotional goal, and a stability goal. Side by side with that, it had to be specific. There had to be a specific cost, and now there has to be a deadline. I'll give you a personal example. Our business, the last three years, we focused our guys to have a goal. And then we celebrated it in December at what we call our million dollar round table clinic. Private villa, private chef in Puerto Vallarta. We had a blast. Second year we did this. We went out to the second largest private residence in the United States called Ojica Castle. The castle in which Scott Fitzgerald, the author of The Great Gatsby was inspired to write that book. Why? Because of his experience at Ojica Castle. Last year we got to the biggest private lodge in Lake Tahoe. Now I've never been snowboarding before, well, listen, I decided to focus ourselves in on what we did during the summer, not only enjoy this retreat with over 100 of our friends, but also experience a lodge where we had a bear walking across the lawn and everybody's running outside to take a selfie with it. Crazy experience. But that's what we decided to do in terms of setting a goal that we can reach it so we can have some experiences, not just a simple vacation. Tip number three, go out and create experiences. I want you to build new friendships. I want, I want you to make some new connections. For example, here in Chicago, one of the best cities to enjoy summertime, there's all sorts of fests. You got your blues fest. You got your house music fest. Taste of Chicago. You got your rib fest. You got your air and water show. On and on and on. So many things to do when so many people are out and about. An opportunity for you to bump into somebody, shake hands, make a new connection, make a new friend and grow your business from there. By getting yourself involved in your community, block parties, whatever it may be, you give yourself better odds of maximizing new relationships and opening up new doors, and you growing as an individual. You're growing as an entrepreneur. Why? Because you've got to explain what you do as a career. You've got to explain what you do as a business. Guess what happens at these fests? Guess what happens at these outings? You create experiences not only enjoying the moment, but also you have practice on how you're pitching your business and how you're building your message as an entrepreneur. And along the way, you start refining it, defining it, you start embracing it and owning it, your confidence as an entrepreneur starts growing. Final thoughts. I always like taking advantage when my competition is taking it easy. I know that when push comes to shove, they want to have a beer, they want to kick back, they want to relax. Listen, and maybe this is an insight for you too as well. Is it where I want to out hustle? We want to out strategize? We want to develop and out work our competition. Why? Because every entrepreneurial story as a one, three, five, 10 year type of story where they focused in for a period of time for one year, three years, five years, 10 years. That's the process of business. And that's part of the process you've got to trust. You gotta, you gotta trust that you gotta put all the work in as an entrepreneur, discipline yourselves, especially during the summertime when everybody wants to take it easy, when everybody wants to take it casual, you go double down. With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. And here's the thing, I'd love to know your comments. I'd love to know your feedback. I'd love to know whether or not you've ever thought about treating summer differently than what I proposed to you here in this video. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like on our business page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit the notification squad so therefore you can be alerted when we upload our next episode. Till me again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.